In this lecture, you'll learn about Active IQ, which is an online management tool from NetApp, which used to be known as My Auto Support. What it allows you to do is to monitor the health of your storage systems, and it also offers advice on recommended upgrades and best practice. An easy way to open Active IQ is straight from the NetApp homepage, which is where I am now. I'll click on sign in and then click to sign into the support site. And then you'll get a prompt here for your username and password. I'm already logged in, which is why it didn't ask me. And I've landed on the support dashboard. In here, you can see the system inventory. That's all of the NetApp systems that are associated with your username. And you'll see all of your ONTAP systems here. You can see the AFF and FAS systems. Any other NetApp platforms as well that you've got will be listed here. Also software like NetApp Insight would also be listed. If you want to add additional systems in here, the way to do that is go up to the products menu and then click on register products. When you do that, it will ask you to enter the serial number. And when you've done that, those other platforms will show up in here as well. Other things on the support dashboard, if you've got any technical support cases open, they will be listed here. You can also create a new case on this page as well. Below that is Active IQ, which is what we're gonna focus on in this lecture. So I'll come back to that in a second. If you've got any part requests, if any of your parts had failed and you sent them back to be replaced, they'll be listed in here. You'll get a warning message about any contracts and warranties that are going to expire soon. You can download recommended software updates from here as well. That's also listed in Active IQ, so I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. You can look up known bugs in here. There's a link to more documentation, and if you've got any new orders in the works right now, they will show up in the order status. So that's everything on the main support page dashboard. So let's go back to Active IQ. To access that, you can go to Tools and then select Active IQ from there, or just from the main Active IQ section in the dashboard, I can click on that, and that will open up Active IQ in a new tab. So what Active IQ is, it's, it's a main hub for monitoring all of your systems. With your ONTAP systems, by default, every week they will call home, they will send information about themselves to the NetApp website. So all of the logs get sent, and also if there's any issues with them, they'll send that information to NetApp as well. They also send information such as how full the system is, etc. And then what happens is if there's any issues on your system, then typically NetApp will actually get in touch with you about that. If you are the support contact for that system, NetApp will see that there's an issue with their system because the system has told NetApp about it and then NetApp will get in touch with you. But rather than waiting for NetApp to get in touch with you, you can proactively monitor your own systems using that same information here. So you see it's Active IQ. The old name was My Support, which is why the URL still uses that. So you can get here through the NetApp website or you could also just come here directly by going to mysupport.netapp.com slash myautosupport and that will land you here on the Active IQ page. Right now we're on the dashboard. Up at the top, you can see if we've got any high risk or any alerts, they will be reported here. Below that, we've got the inventory again. Again, you can see it's not just on tap systems that are shown here. All of the different platforms will be reported in Active IQ. The next section is capacity forecasting. So the system, every week when it sends information about itself back to NetApp, that includes how full the disks are. So NetApp can see what your normal growth is over time and they will report in here if the system is going to be full soon. So you can see 
any systems that are going to be over 90% full in one month, three months, six months, or are already 90% full. So this is very useful for capacity planning. You can see ahead of time when your system is likely to be reaching capacity, so you can add disks ahead of time. Moving further down, you'll get a warning if any of your support contracts are coming up for renewal. The next box is storage efficiency ratios. This reports back on your deduplication, compression, and compaction. So you can see how much space savings you're getting from that. Don't worry about compression and deduplication yet because we're going to cover that in a section later on. But just know that for now that you can see how much actual space savings you're getting. It depends on what kind of data you've got in there, how much duplicate data there is of how much space savings you're going to get from those storage efficiency technologies. You'll also see a link in here if you're not following best practice, for example, for any of your volumes that don't have storage efficiency enabled. Moving down, you can see health reports. I'll show you a bit more detail about that coming up in a minute. And then next to that is the software upgrade recommendations. So if any of your systems are not running the latest version of the operating system, that will be reported here. You can see in this example, we've got two systems and 100% of them are not running the latest version of ONTAP. It's not just the ONTAP operating system that you're going to get reports on here. Also the system firmware, disk firmware and your disk shelves as well. If they're not running the latest software, that will be reported here. And you can also click on it to get more information about what the recommended version is that you should upgrade to. Further down, you will get warning messages if any of your systems are reaching end of support. And also if you've got any technical support cases open, they will be listed here as well. Okay, so that's everything you can see on the dashboard. You see, we've got a flyout menu over here on the left. The next one down is configuration. You can't actually do configuration from Active IQ. It is a reporting portal. So it reports on your systems here. What you'll see in configuration is which systems you have got registered. And it also tells you other information, like what the operating system is, is running on there, etc. So it's more information than configuration, really. Next one down is Upgrade Advisor. This is very useful if you've got any systems that are not running the latest recommended version of the software, it will tell you about it in here. And you can get a report from here as well. So I will click on Next, and then it tells me the systems that are not running on the latest version of ONTAP. It tells me what the current version is, and it will also give me a report from here about the actions that I should take to upgrade it to the latest version. Click on Next to see that. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because we're going to have an upgrade section later on where I'll tell you all about it then. Further on the left, next up is Auto Support Alerts. So if you've got any problems with your system, they will be reported in here. You can also click on the next tab, which is the auto support alert subscription. In here, there's a list of possible errors and you can tick them in here and then enter your email address over here on the right. And if any of those errors occur, you will be sent an email notification when that happens. The next one down is the health tab. In here, if there's any low, medium or high impact health concerns, it will be reported in here. Now, if you know about one of these things and it's not actually an issue in your environment, you can click on the acknowledgement flag here and then it will be hidden from this window so you're not going to see it every time. Next one along is security vulnerabilities. If there's any known vulnerabilities which have been fixed by NetApp but you haven't applied that patch yet, that will be reported in here and you can also see what the recommended corrective action is. Next one along is best practices. So if there's any best practices that you're not following, they will be reported in here. And again, you can see the corrective action. So it warns you, hey, you're not doing things the way that you're meant to do. Here's a way to do it. And here is information on how to configure that. So super useful. Uh, performance is not enabled on the system here. Next one is health trending, where again, it's really linking to the same kind of information again. So you can look at any kind of unresolved alerts. If I click on this, it's going to tell me again 
the alerts that I've got for my particular systems. And then the last tab is Risk Advisor, and it will tell me here, again, if I'm going to do an upgrade, if there's any known risks about doing that. Next one down is Interop Advisor, which is currently in beta as I'm recording this video. Pretty self-explanatory. If you're going to be using any particular platforms, parts, software together, you can get reports in here about the interoperability, if there's going to be any issues. And the last one down is advisories. And it will tell you here if any of your volumes have been identified that they would get better performance if you were using Flash there. And also protection advisor. This is if any of your volumes are not being replicated somewhere else. So it looks like you've only got one copy of that particular volume. Well, if the building burns down, then it's possible you're going to lose that volume if you're not replicating or backing it up somewhere else. If you're backing it up to tape, then okay, you, you don't have to worry about this, but it's just telling you about volumes that don't have snap mirror or snap vault configured. Again, we'll be discussing that in a later section. Last thing to tell you about in here is the, the menu up at the top here. It's recommended to come in here regularly. So you could do this like every day or every week or however often is suitable for you and see what's going on with your system. But to do that, you have to log in here yourself. If you go on my reports, then you can get the same kind of information in here. You can generate a report, which the output will be either an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF. And also you can configure it so that will be emailed to you as well. So you could set up some reports in here and then email those reports to yourself every day or every week. And that's going to tell you if there's any issues on your system. And then going back again, again, I mentioned earlier that every week the system is going to send information about itself to NetApp anyway. The way that is done is by HTTPS and that works straight out of the box. So as long as you don't have a firewall in the way that is blocking that traffic, then by default, this information is going to be sent by the system to NetApp. If you want to manually update it to send the auto support information to upload it again, you can do that from the auto support upload menu here. Other things, there's a link to tools, uh, to other tools and other resources on the NetApp website. Custom groups, what this would be useful for is if you are managing multiple NetApp systems for different companies, then you can group them into different groups. So you could have a group for company A, a group for company B and so on. It just makes it easier for administration. What can fig compare is for? Again, this would be useful in a larger environment where if you've got a golden config, which is your best practice configuration, you can save that as a golden config and then ActiveIQ will report if it sees any systems that are not matching those best practice configurations. So it's useful if, if anything is not configured as it should be, then config compare can find that for you. And the last one is the HCI expansion advisor. NetApp offer HCI systems as well. Now it's not on tap and that just gives you information about if you want to expand, if you want to grow that. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp storage complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.